Have you ever gotten an accidental curly in your thing of straight fries, except the whole experience was a lot less magical? Allow me to explain. An invasive species is a plant, fungus, or animal species that is not native to a specific location and which has a tendency to spread to a degree believed to cause damage to the environment, human economy, or human health. But wouldn't it be fun to have exotic species roaming through the woods with our deer and elk? <coughs> no, it wouldn't. And here's why. Invasive species are usually brought over by humans into an unknown environment and they actually cause a lot of environmental problems for the native species. These native species have to get used to an unfamiliar organism taking resources like food and water. This creates more competition, taking up space. Remember that food, water, and habitat is crucial for any organism to survive. The damage caused by these invasive species typically lead to the death of native species, which is why they cause such a huge problem. Knock knock at the door, it's Thomas Austin, someone who introduced an invasive species to the beautiful country of Australian. Thomas Austin was a sailor in 1859 who traveled from Europe to Australia because Europeans like to take things that don't belong to them. He knew he was going to be lonely way down in Australia, so what did he bring with him on his ship? Bunnies. 24 bunnies. Unfortunately, Mr. Austin forgot that bunnies are very sexually active. So his 24 bunnies became a lot more than 24 bunnies. In fact, by 1920, there were 10 billion bunnies in Australia. There were more bunnies in Australia than there were humans on the earth. So as you'd imagine, the native species began to suffer greatly. These bunnies shared the same resources as kangaroos, possums, species of mice, and our other friends in the outback. However, there is a possible solution. In 1950, the Australian government introduced a virus called mysoma, which caused mysomatosis, leading the bunnies to a tumorous death. This didn't work, however, because the bunnies eventually adapted to the virus and it is now ineffective. Our solution is to aerially introduce a toxin called sodium fluoroacetate in the form of a powder onto areas that have mass populations of bunnies. This substance is also known as 1080 and won't affect the native species because it naturally occurs in the country's acacias, shaggy peas, and gastrolibium. In other words, the native species will be safe because they've adapted to the toxins within the plants. But because the invasive species has not been in the environment as long as the natives have, they haven't had the time to be completely immune to the toxins. So the 1080 has been dropped. But what about the bunnies that live in the burrows? The difference between our solution and the experiment conducted in 1950 is that the myzoma virus was only introduced into the bunny's burrows. However, this is still a crucial aspect to lowering the bunny population. So, bait pellets laced with 1080 will be left in front of the bunny's burrows. This will help with further lowering the population of rabbits in Australia. And no, Australia is not going to be left covered in toxin powder. 1080 naturally goes back into the soil and water, so our native species are still safe from these toxins. The cost for the solution is listed below, since the solution is in two parts. The cost of aerial spreading is about 17 Australian dollars. Since Australia is about 297,000 hectares, it would cost about 6,575,161 Australian dollars. Spreading the bait per hectare can cost anywhere from just $4 to 80 Australian dollars. So the total cost for the bait will be from 1,547,097 Australian dollars to 31,041,936 Australian dollars. It may be costly, but if the bunny population does go down, our native species will be able to live comfortably again. And after decades of research and spending, the bunny population will finally go down for good.